Good afternoon, everyone. You are all at the free webinar, Live Landing Page Critiques, and this webinar is being brought to you by our parent company, Situated Research. My name is Michelle Sherritt. I'm the VP and co-founder here at Situated Research, and we are so happy to see all of you today. Um, we have a little over 400 people, and many of you have asked for us to review your websites live today. Um, so obviously we can't get to everybody. So what we're going to do is we pick and choose um, a few. And we're going to go ahead and go through those. And if we don't get to your website, we'll go ahead and send you um, a video of your analysis uh, through email so that you will have that. And if you are attending today and you didn't know that you could submit your URL to be reviewed, um, just simply message me and I'll give you my contact information at the very end. All right, so uh, we still have a few people trickling in here, but we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, the topics that we're going to talk about today are menu navigation structure. We're also gonna talk about how your website's organized. We're going to talk about color psychology and what that means. We're going to talk about graphics of websites, font sizes, color, and headings. We're also going to talk about website copy, so the content of your website to find out if your website's too wordy and what your page lengths are. We're going to talk a little bit about social media integration and SEO. And we're also going to talk about page layout and structure. So first, I kind of want to tell you just a little bit about our company, Situated Research. Um, our team was actually the first usability firm uh, to come up with a free usability report for uh, websites. So it used to be a 15 to 20 page report, and we'd go over 20 different areas of usability. And we go through your website and give you a score, one out of five for each category, and then give you a total score at the very end. Now what we do uh, is we do videos that turn out to be about 15 uh, to 20 minutes, depending on how many issues we find, where we review the home page of your website and one internal page. Uh, and that's for free. And uh, you can find that on our website, and I'll give you the link um, before we leave today's session. Um, or you can just message me the URL to your website. You get the video within 48 hours. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. Um, we've actually conducted over 5,000 website reviews uh, in the last six years. So we're really excited about that. And we've actually almost hit 5,000 website reviews for 2016 already uh, since January. So. A lot more companies are catching on and saying, oh, this is free. I'm going to go ahead and get my website reviewed as well. Um, so today we're doing this session, and we've been doing the live landing page critique session um, about twice a month since January. And the reason why we've been doing it uh, is because it gives people an insight into the usability and user friendliness of their website. Um, but every website we seem to find some sort of issue when it comes to usability or even functionality for that matter. So why is that? Well, many companies are hiring um, web design firms that don't specialize in usability. So here at Situated Research, we have our sister company, QCamp. And QCamp handles all of our web design, um, social media marketing, um, general marketing, uh, also print advertising, etc. And so what we do is every time we design a website or redesign a site, we run it through the gamut of tests uh, with, with users, so with our situated research team. So um, that free video that I was telling you about, we do a free marketing analysis. So you get a free video analysis of your website by an expert. And it includes an analysis of the overall user friendliness of your website. And it's research driven analysis of your branding and marketing presence. So we take a look at your marketing. We take a look at your branding throughout your website. Uh, it's an evaluation of your site's menu navigation structure and ease of use. 
So especially if you have an e-commerce site, you'd want to get this free video because you want to make sure that that user experience is a good one. Um, in the video, we give you action items to improve your website's effectiveness, so that's helpful as well. And we go through different areas of usability. Uh, as far as the overall user experience, we want to make sure that when we come to your website, there's a clear essence of business. We know exactly what your business is about, what this website's going to be about, what you're selling, what your product is, your service. Um, we go ahead and we look at color psychology, the aesthetics of your website. Uh, is your website fun to use? Is it boring? Um, is there too, min too much content, um, et cetera? So we look at all these different areas and we put all of that in the video. And we're going to be doing, we're going to be looking at these different areas today live as we review your websites as well. We also look at the heuristics of the website. So we look at how does it function? We look at the wireframe. We look at the content. Um, we look at the menu navigation. So we have our information architects take a look at that uh, and make sure that there's clear, distinct labeling. Everything makes sense. Um, so we go through all these different areas in that free video as well. So why do we do this? Again, um, we've come across many people who want their website redesigned and we're like, well, let's take a look at your current site and see what the issues are so that we don't repeat them. Um, but having this free analysis and actually looking at the user experience um, helps you to improve retaining customers on your website, building trust on your website, and all in all, boosting your sales. So we've done this uh, live webinar and done live reviews for big companies, small companies, mom and pop shops, you name it, we've done it. Um, and so now having done almost 10,000 uh, website reviews, we've really um, built our niche in the market um, by having our usability experts help us with that. So we're going to go ahead and switch over. Um, so let me go ahead and do that. Okay, we're going to switch over. Just give me one second. Okay, so we're switched over. Um, and what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and start reviewing the websites live. So um, I have six websites um, up that we're going to review, um, see what we have time for. And again, if we don't have time for yours, uh, you will still receive a review of your website if you submit your URL. And if you didn't, you can message us. Um, so the first one is Ease Hardware. <clears throat> Okay, so the first thing that we do uh, is we pull up the website, the home page, and we look to see, okay, do we understand what this business is about? Do we know what they're selling? Um, so it's Ace Hardware. We all know it's a hardware store. Pretty clear. Um, because of that, because their branding and their marketing is so good, and we all know who Ace Hardware is, um, I wouldn't tell them to put a little spiel here about Ace Hardware, um, just because it's nationally known, um, but normally we would. Um, so this pop-up window comes up and they want to know, they want you to be the first to get exclusive offers. They want you to sign up for their mailing list. Um, so that pops up right away. Now, that's great to kind of get that up front and center for users because that's something that you want them to do, um, but you may not necessarily want that to pop out as soon as someone gets to your website. So um, that should be later on. All right, so uh, if we look at the home page, got rid of that, um, we're probably, users are coming to Ace Hardware, they know what Ace Hardware is, they're not going to do a Google search and say, oh, local hardware stores. Um, they know Ace Hardware, so they're specifically coming here and they're looking for something. So the first thing, um, well, let me first say this. Uh, the websites that we're reviewing today, um, we've already had users test them. So I'm kind of giving you that user feedback as well. Um, so users said that what they did is they didn't even look at the website. 
to be perfectly honest, they just went to the search box and typed in what they were looking for. So let's just say saws. And that's what we want to find. Um, and then they just started looking through, just hit view all because they wanted to see all the saws that were available. And then they went to their price range. And then they kind of took a peek to see what was offered. And I go, okay, let's look at this one. Okay, that looks good. I can see it. Um, there's information about it. I can read about it. Uh, shipping information, learn about returns, because that was important to users as well. Okay, looks good. I think I'm going to add one of these to my cart. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and check out. And then we kind of went through that process. Um, so as far as the user journey went, it was very quick, very fast. Um, we couldn't go through the entire checkout process, but from what we could see, it was pretty quick. Um, so we're going to go back to the home page. The other thing that we look at is branding and marketing. So this is Ace Hardware's logo. We all know it. Um, so we would expect to see red and black throughout the website. So we do see that. Um, and we can see that all the way down. We click on an internal page. The look and feel stays the same, so the menu structure stays the same, so that's good. Um, go back to the home page. The next thing that we look at is the actual menu structure. So um, for our main menu, we don't want to have any more then four to six main menu options because we don't want things to get confusing for users. And then as far as some menus, we don't want to have uh, any more than three to four. So if we go to shop, we can see that there's sub menus. There's even more menus that you can't see. Um, and then there's even more sub menus and even more sub menus. Um, so Ace sells a lot of products. It's an e-commerce site. There's a better way to organize this information. So we'd have an architect kind of take a peek here um, and be like, okay, well, if I go down, you know, here's my breadcrumbs. I go down, uh, is information game lost? And it most likely is. Um, are items getting lost within the website? Is it easy to search for? Um, so just because you have thousands of products that you're selling, there's a way in your menu structure to have it so that it makes sense for users and so that users aren't going to get lost because all they're going to do is just use the search box. And that means that your website's not user-friendly. So we would take a look at the menu structure here. Um, let's click on one more internal page. I'm just making sure the look and feel stays the same, which it does. And then I want to go to a products page real quick. Okay, I'm just making sure that the footer stays on every page, which it does. Okay, so this is the footer of the website. I want you to sign up for uh, the email, uh, mailing list, contact info. Uh, social media buttons are here, which is great, and then their navigation, menu navigation. So that's done very well. So making sure that this is at the footer of every page is very important. Um, so they've done a good job. Okay, and then there's also a login, create an account. Um, we obviously are not going to go through that, but um, the people at ACE, if you guys want us to do a full review of your website, meaning every page of your website, just contact me to get a quote. Um, and anyone, too. If you want your entire website reviewed, uh, just uh, email me, and we can go ahead and take a look at it. So one thing that we do also when we look at a website was we run it through two free tests. And you can do this as well. Uh, the first one is validator.w3.org. And you simply put in the URL to your website or to any page of your website to check the programming errors that are contained on that page. So this is the home page. And on the home page, we have 15 errors. Some are fatal programming errors that need to get fixed. Um, why is this important? You want to make sure, one, that your website's perfect. So there shouldn't be any programming errors. So whoever programmed it, um, you can tell if they know what they're doing or not. 
um, by checking this because there should not be any programming errors whatsoever. Um, the other thing too is if you do have programming errors, that could mean that your website looks or feels differently and functions differently in different search engines. So if I have someone in Google Chrome and then I have someone in Safari, maybe in Google Chrome the website works perfectly, but in Safari it doesn't. So that's a problem so that you could lose customers that way as well. Let me show you, um, if you click on a products page, let's just do that real quick, oops. And we copy the URL to this page, we can then go to validator.w3.org and again, put in the address and hit enter. It's gonna pull up all the programming errors for that page. And so for that page we have, Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, 187 programming errors. That's a lot um, on a products page. So that needs to be looked at. Um, sometimes it's an easy fix, other times it's not. Um, and this is a products page. So we definitely don't want to have any programming errors. I'm going to go back to the home page and copy the URL. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to another free tool and it is um, the URL is marketing.grader.com and it'll transfer you to website.grader.com. doesn't really matter. Um, you just put in the URL to your website, put in your email address, and then hit get your answer. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna grade the website. This is a free tool through HubSpot, um, and it goes through the performance of your website. Um, it goes through social media. It goes through if you have a mobile version of your site. Uh, it goes through search engine optimization. It goes through if your website's secure or not. So all in all, this website has 72, so that's not too bad. As far as performance goes, there are some performance errors, um, some issues as far as load speeds, and that could just be because of the amount of images that the website has to load. So we go ahead and take a look at that. Um, it also shows you if you have a mobile um, version of your site, so a responsive version, um, so that way your website looks and feels and functions correctly on a mobile device, which this does. Um, if it didn't, it would tell you. Um, as far as SEO goes, there are a lot of SEO issues here. So um, Ace Hardware, you need to work on your search engine optimization. And as far as security, um, for e-commerce websites, we want to make sure that, um, that it's secure. Um, and that you have an SSL certificate. An SSL certificate, basically what that does is it um, makes sure that your website's secure and it makes sure that um, you can receive secure information. So if you're getting um, email addresses or mailing addresses or um, credit card information, you want to make sure that the website's secure and safe because people are going to know that. And if they uh, come to the site and it's not secure, um, they are not going to put in their personal information. So here in the URL, people usually know that it's secure because it says HTTPS and that S is for secure. So a secure socket layer certificate or SSL certificate um, would be purchased with your hosting company and then that would help you to make your website secure. So um, Ace Hardware, you guys did a great job. Uh, your website is secure, so good job. Uh, the next site that we're going to go ahead and look at is Oswald's Pharmacy, and that's a pharmaceutical company um, store um, here in Naperville. And so they've asked us to kind of take a look at their website. Um, so again, the first thing that we do is we look at the home page, and we can say, okay. Um, a lot of information here and I think they actually just redid their website I think they told us um, so I think as far as the colors go um,
well. Um, and when I come to the home page, I know exactly what this website's about. Um, but it would be nice, though, to have a little spiel about Os Oswald's Pharmacy and to have that in there. Um, because right now, I know it's a pharmacy. I know what a pharmacy is. Um, but you're showing me lift chairs. And so I'm kind of like, okay, and waterproof cast covers. I'm like, well, what's that? And now you're telling me about Christmas in July. So it could be a little confusing as to what your specialty is. I'm not quite sure. Um, so then um, just kind of looking uh, again at the website. Um, you know, you can do prescription refills. <clears throat> there's post office. There's medical equipment. So it's kind of telling you the different areas here, and you can learn more, which is nice. If you scroll down, there's also featured products, um, which is nice as well. So I'm guessing that this is an e-commerce site we're going to find out as soon as we get um, into it a little bit more. It tells you a little bit about their location. And so um, that's good, but you may want to put that in the footer and make it smaller because it's taking up a lot of real estate, a lot of space on the home page. Um, and so you may want to put that on a Contact Us page instead. Um, we also have um, About Oswalds. And so it's telling us a little bit about that. Um, and then we have um, news here too. So there must be a blog of some sort. Um, and then the footer here, uh, we have our main menu navigation, which is good. Um, so we have that. One thing that I didn't mention on the Ace Hardware website is a sitemap. Um, and a sitemap is basically just the hierarchy of the pages of your website and the content on your website. Um, and you always want to have a sitemap labeled here so that um, people can come to the site and click on it. And then they can go ahead and search through the website that way by categories. Um, but you also want to have a sitemap as well because that hierarchy of every page of your content on your website gets submitted to search engines. And then that helps search engines to look at your website and to rank you. So um, that's helpful as well. And I don't see a sitemap here, so that's something that would need to be added. Um, and we do have our social media buttons, which is good. Um, so I would add that. Um, let's go ahead and look at some internal pages. <clears throat> okay. So we have our staff, our hours, about us. Okay, let's look at products. Let's just... Okay, so this isn't an e-commerce site because I can't purchase anything on here. Um, if I went back to the home page and I went to refill a prescription, um, okay, so there's a process, there's a form for that as well. Okay. Okay, so I'm wondering if you're putting in your personal information here, I wouldn't because I don't see HTTPS at the top. Um, so let me go ahead and run this through Website Grader real quick. Let's do that just out of curiosity and see if there is an SSL certificate. So again, we're using um, marketinggrader.com. Um, and so um, it's saying that the website's good. Uh, as far as performance, it's a little slow, but that's okay. It's probably, again, um, an image issue. Um, it is responsive, so that's good. Uh, SEO could be worked on a little bit, 25 out of 30. Um, and then security is missing, see? Um, so that's a big thing because, um, like I said, if it were me, I would not be putting in my personal information for my prescription. I just wouldn't do it. So you guys um, call your hosting company and get that SSL certificate put on your website uh, right away. Same thing with contact page. Um, so it's refill prescription again or send us a note. Um, I'd get rid of refill a prescription because that has its own page. 
I would just strictly make this a contact us page. Um, so yeah, so that's it. So um, pretty good job. Again, the SSL certificate is very, very important. Okay, so the next website that we're going to look at is a bakery. And this is a local bakery here in um, our town. So we want to make sure, um, first of all, that we understand it's a bakery. So we come to the website, we understand that. I'm just going to copy their URL here. Um, so it's Dieta's Bakery. We have the main menu here. Uh, it says menu, sweet treats, and savory eats. I'm not sure why the word menus here, so may want to kind of take a look at that. Um, we have menu navigation up here. Oh, because we're on the menu page. Okay, let's duh. hold on. Let's just go to the main page. Oh, there we go. Thank you to the owner of Dietis for, um, I hope I'm saying that correctly as well, for uh, correcting me here. Okay, so this is the home page. Um, I really like the image. This is really cool. Um, so this is the logo, so that looks nice. Um, so we kind of scroll down a little bit. I'm not seeing any main menu navigation, though. And I'm really not too sure where these colors came from all of a sudden. This is really bright, um, kind of surprising to me. So. Um, you want to work on the color psychology of the website because colors mean things to people like red means stop, danger, don't move forward, uh, green means go ahead, um, and it's welcoming. Um, so your logo, this really, this color really has nothing to do with anything. It's very bright, um, so I would definitely change that. Um, since we are down here, let's go ahead and look at the footer. It's pretty basic. Again, um, there's no sitemaps. So we'd want to add a sitemap. And these are clickable, of course. Um, so yes, I'm okay. So here's the main menu navigation. However, when you scroll down, and you're here, well, let's say you scroll down to here, and you want to see the main menu again. Well, I have to scroll all the way back up. So the design, there's something off here. And let me um, see. If this is a WordPress. Okay, so it's not. I thought maybe this was a WordPress design. Because I was going to say, usually WordPress is pretty good with um, usability and having the main menu follow you as you go down. So I'd have to look at the code to see how this was built. Um, but that's something that needs to be fixed. So let's go ahead and take a look at an internal page and see the same thing happens again. So it disappears. Okay. Um, so this is a layout. Let's look at one more page. Okay, so the layout stays the same, which is good. Um, so this is the Contact Us page. Just kind of taking a peek here. Um, so here's a form to fill out. Okay. Um, so again, I don't see... Um, a secure socket layer certificate here um, and you are giving some personal information like your phone number email address name um, we go ahead and let's run it through website grader real fast just make sure that I'm correct when I'm saying that yeah security there is that one so um, I would get one just because uh, people are putting in their personal information. Um, performance is a little slow since we are here. We'll take a look at this. And that could be, again, um, some scripting issues. Uh, you do have a mobile issue, um, a mobile version of your site, which is good. As far as SEO goes, uh, some things could get fixed. Um, and then, of course, there's no secure socket layer. So let's go ahead. Um, Somebody was just like, what about the programming errors? So let's go ahead and pop that in and see. So we're on the home page. We're looking at the home page. See if there are any programming issues. We'll wait while the wheel spins here. Okay. 
So just on the home page, there are 44 programming errors. It probably has to do with um, this, with the um, banner, the menu navigation not flowing. Um, and could be some issues there, um, but we'd have to take a look at it. And I would also say, as far as the main menu structure goes, we have six, so that's between that six. Um, but I would reorder it. I would have get in touch being last. Usually contact us, get in touch. That's always last, listed last. Um, services should be listed probably up here by menu because that's important. Um, because it lists everything that you guys do. Okay, it's by hand click this. Okay, this is one thing um, that's important as well. You always want to keep people on your website. And there's a number of reasons for that. Um, but the most important is by keeping them on your website, they're going to order something or they're going to inquire about something. Um, having them off the website now, they could accidentally close this window and not be able to get back to your website. Maybe they did a Google search. Um, even though you have it on your document here, they could just type it in. But um, you always want to make sure that people stay on your website. So if you want your frequently asked questions, what I would suggest doing is having them on the website, but having a little plus button for the answer. And they can just click on it and the answer shows up. And they could collapse it if they don't want to see it and go to the next one. That way you can fit all of your questions. Um, or having download all FAQs, that's fine. But then having a window just pop up here with the PDF document. That's another way to get around keeping people on your website. Okay, but um, otherwise, all in all, very, very well done. Thank you so much for allowing us to review your site today. Um, the next one is All State, and I'm actually not going to review this one today because we've reviewed it before in past webinars, so we only do it once. Um, so I'm not going to review that today for you folks. Um, so this next site is a tutoring uh, company out in Denver, Colorado. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at their site. Um, okay, for those of you at Allstate, um, we've done the review before, um, so we only do it one time for free. So if you'd like the entire website looked at, uh, just message me and I can go ahead and send you guys a quote. Okay, so um, Gina at uh, Denver Tutoring wanted us to take a look at their website today. And so um, we see, again, company logo. So we see blue and black um, or a darkish blue. Um, so we expect to see that coloring throughout the website. Uh, this red and bright yellow um, are just colors that were chosen. So that's something to kind of take a look at because this is really bright and harsh. Um, and like I said, red in color psychology needs to stop don't go any further, danger. Um, so you're probably not getting the performance on these forms that you'd like, and that could be why. So kind of take a look at that. Um, looking at the homepage, we can see exactly what this company is about. You can see where they're located, learn some information about them. Um, let me see. This is a pretty big footer, and I don't think I see a site map. Yeah. Oh, oh, here it is. Okay. So let's go ahead and click on site map so you can see um, Okay. Wow. Okay, the site map here was not done correctly. Okay. They built a site map. Sorry guys. You guys built a site map for SEO. Um, and that's the problem. Um, wow. You see, I'm scrolling down and down and down and down and down and down. Um, you guys are wanting to rank very high as far as tutoring goes. Um, and you guys had an SEO person probably work on this for you, but they didn't do it correctly. Um, your site map is a hierarchy of your main menu navigation. Okay, so here you should have about academic tutoring, test prep, 
etc. And then your submenus. So under about, you would have video overview, tutor selection process, etc. Um, not all of this. So um, sitemap's not done correctly, which means that if the sitemap was submitted to the different search engines, they are not even going to look at your website because they can see um, that you did this for SEO. This isn't your sitemap. So they're not going to look at any pages of your website because you don't have a, a page for first grade math time. Um, so you really you need to kind of take a look at that and have your SEO people help you with that um, or hire us to help you with that because uh, this is a little crazy. Um, it just, you know, as far as content goes as well, um, having pages that scroll and scroll with content um, isn't a good thing either. This just reminded me of that because we haven't really looked at content yet. Um, so let's go ahead uh, and do that really quickly. So the content on this page, um, you have to scroll a little bit. There's a lot going on with this video playing. Um, so that's distracting, but the content's very short and to the point. But sometimes companies um, write up content for their website and they go on and on. And so it makes you have to scroll through the page. And when that happens, um, Users usually just skim information online, so they're not reading it word for word anyway. Uh, they're just skimming it for information that they want and that they need, that they came to the website for. Um, so if they have to scroll through a long page of content, they're most likely going to leave because they're bored. Um, or they're just going to try to find a search box to look for the information that they came for um, initially. So something to keep in mind too. And a lot of small businesses make the mistake of writing content for their website and then making more pages for their website just by repeating content, just by rewording it. And when you do that, the search engines, they know. And so then they don't look at your website. So then your website doesn't get ranked. So that's an issue. And then you have users who come to the site, see that content's repeated and they're just turned off by it. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, as we look at this website, also the main menu navigation, we do have uh, four to six, which is great. The submenus, we have so many submenus. Um, so that's a problem. We need to kind of take a look and say, hey, do we need all of these submenus? Um, can we categorize them so that we just have a foreign languages page instead of French, German, Latin, Mandarin, I mean, do we really have a page for all of these? Okay, but I'm wondering if it's the same page and it just says French. It is. Okay, so just this changes. Um, not needed. Have one page that says foreign languages. One page that says math tutoring. One page that says science tutoring. Um, so that's a way to fix that as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go to the home page and just check out the programming errors. Just look at that real quick. So on the home page alone, there are 35 programming errors. Let's go ahead and go through website grader as well. Okay, so 89, this is the highest that we've had today, which is good, but performance is the only thing that's lacking. Um, so that could be because of the many um, menu options that you're giving people, the images, there was some video that was playing that could delay things as well. Um, so we'd have to kind of take a look at that. Um, but otherwise, good job, guys. I would definitely, you know, take a look at the menu structure, take a look at the content, your footer, um, taking a look at this, definitely fixing the sitemap because that's a huge concern. Um, yeah, okay. So the next site that we're going to look at is actually the last one today and it is Soft Surroundings, the clothing store. Um, it has a franchise here in Naperville. 
and uh, Clara has asked us to kind of take a peek at it. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. So the first thing that happens is the pop-up comes up um, as soon as you get to the store. It says good things happening when you subscribe to our email. So again, another email pop-up. Again, this isn't something that you probably want to have pop up right away um, because users just end up closing it right away because they're not sure what this store is all about. They're not sure if they want to sign up for um, a mailing list either. Um, so let me copy the URL. So here's the homepage. Aesthetically, I love this website. Um, I, I just love it. Uh, it's kind of three-dimensional a little bit as well. Um, but I can tell um, that they're a clothing store just because I'm looking at um, the navigation, uh, but if I didn't look at the navigation, it just says soft surroundings, my time, my place, myself. I'm not too sure what that's about. Um, anticipating autumn, shop the new collection, browse the new catalog. So it's got to be about clothes, right? Um, maybe put a little spiel here about the company. Um, has bedding, uh, shoes, accessories. So I like the way that this is, but you could see how things could get lost um, on the website by having it this way. Um, click here to explore. Um, so you really never need to tell users to click. If you do, that's just poor usability. Um, so saying click here to explore is bad. If users don't know that they can click here, you probably shouldn't make it clickable. Um, so that's something to think about as well. Uh, here's the footer. So we have our social media outlets, which is great. We have our iPad app, um, sign up for emails, and then we have our menu navigation here. I would definitely put the copyright and all of this information on one line. So separate it. I want to see what their sitemap looks like. Okay, so this is the way sitemap should be done. Um, it has each page of the website and then the subcategories as well. So if I wanted to, I could just click on the site map if they didn't have a search box and I wanted a swimsuit. So I would just go to swim and then I want separate. So I would just click on that. So um, this is an e-commerce site, which is great. And we can tell that it does have a secure socket layer certificate because of the HTTPS, which is good. I'm um, just going to go ahead and click on a product, click add to my bag, Whoop. okay, this is not adding it to my bag, oh, because I need to pick a size and a color, okay, click add to bag, okay, now it worked, okay. All right, let me go, let me just try one more thing. Let's see, I wanted to take a look at this, and I wanted to add to my bag. Oh, it does tell you. Okay, please select a size. I would make this larger and in red, um, kind of pop, because I was confused, and I didn't see that pop up before. Um, so I do need to select a size and then add it. Um, so these messages that are coming up, like this isn't even available, should be at the top. And it should be larger, and I would say put it in red. All right, so back to the home page. So I'm going to go ahead and look at, see what kind of programming errors we're dealing with here. I'm going to just put in the URL, and then we'll scroll down. There's 15 programming errors on the home page of this website uh, that need to get fixed, and that's probably having to do with the images. And I'm going to go ahead and grade it as well. And I'm guessing that there's going to be performance issues because of the images. Maybe not, but we'll go ahead and take a look here. Okay, so 77, which is good. Um, it does have a secure socket layer, which is good. Just, it does have a mobile version. Again, performance is low. SEO is low as well. Um, so we would kind of take a look at that. Um, yeah, load speeds are low as well. So um, just because probably of the amount of images. So that 
can easily be taken care of with a few lines of code. Um, and for this website, we'd actually go through the checkout process to see what that looks like, how that feels to a user. Um, we, of course, aren't going to do that now. Um, but looking at the main menu navigation, let's do that. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight main menu options. And there are sub menus, but not here. So if I click on swim, Here's the submenus, okay. View all, maybe that means view all swimsuits. Oh, view all, okay. Okay, so we've got that. Um, clothing, let's see. So having uh, this left-hand menu navigation is nice. Um, there are a lot of options. Um, we also have special sizes, different features. So information could definitely get lost within this website just because of the amount of products that are being sold. So we'd kind of have to take a look at that and then go ahead and take a look at the user journey as well to see what that looks like. Um, the user journey is basically how many steps does it take a user to come to the website, find a product, and purchase it? Um, are there steps that we can eliminate to make that user journey quicker and more fun for the user? Um, to give them a better all-in-all -all user experience. So uh, that's something that we would have to look at as well. So um, like I said today, you can use uh, validator.w3.org uh, to check the programming errors on your website. And you could even print it out and give the programming errors to your programmer and say, hey, fix this. Um, and you can do that for every page of your site just by copying the URL. And then there's also that free tool, um, website.greater.com or marketing.greater.com, both the same thing, um, that goes ahead and looks at the performance of your website, looks to see that you have a mobile version of your website, looks at search engine optimization, and looks to make sure if your website's secure or not. And that's really important, that secure socket layer certificate. Again, if you, especially if you have an e-commerce site, you have to have it. Um, if you're receiving any kind of payment information, you have to have it. Um, and if you are requesting any kind of personal information from people, you need to have it. Um, so that's important as well. So we're going to go ahead and um, go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, so I'm going to leave you today um, with our information. Remember, you can get that free report you get within 48 hours. It's about a 15 to 20 minute video looking at the marketing of your website as far as, far as um, your branding is concerned, how you're marketing your company online. And also, it will take a look at the user experience, so look at those usability issues that uh, we hit upon today as well. So if you're interested in that, contact us today. There's our contact info. And don't forget those two free tools that we talked about today, too. Um, and you can go ahead and take a look at your website today yourself um, and be like, oh, I got some issues. So if there are any concerns uh, that you have, please contact us. Uh, again, I want to thank all of you for attending today. And like I said, we have this webinar about twice a month now since January. Um, so uh, stay tuned if your website didn't get reviewed and you want it reviewed live. Uh, stay tuned for the next date for September. Those dates will be coming out on our website probably within the next week or so. So again, thank you so much for attending. I hope you take advantage of that free report and I'll see you soon. Thanks so much.